September 1999, a woman is driving home from a birthday party when a drunken high school student plows into her car. With her legs trapped under the dashboard, flames begin to lick her face, and soon much of her body is engulfed. How much did that hurt? This is what one of the first paramedics who arrived on the scene said. She was screaming and wailing, an almost inhuman sound I never heard another person make. So, dying in a burning car is sure to be up there as one hell of a painful death. But as you'll see today, dying isn't always so horrific, even when you get shot, stabbed, or die from a disease. Just so you know, that woman survived. Her name was Jackie Suburido, and she appeared on Oprah in 2003 to talk about her new life. She spent 10 months unconscious after the accident, and when she woke up, she saw that the fire had melted the flesh over much of her body. She died in 2019 from cancer, which is a terrible disease we'll get to later. When it comes to biting the dust in a fire, the best you could hope for is suffocating on the hot gases, which is something that happens to most people who are in fires. If the flames do touch the skin while the person is conscious, the pain is excruciating until they burn through the nerves. That's the painful part, downright excruciatingly painful. That's when you might make a sound that's been described as unholy. For instance, when a woman named Catherine Hayes was burned at the stake in England in 1726 for killing her husband, she was supposed to be strangled first. It didn't quite go right, and an observer remarked that the air was filled with her cries and lamentations. So, dying by burning, not a great way to leave the planet. Also, thankfully, not a very common way to die. The World Health Organization wrote that throughout the globe, around 180,000 people die each year as a result of burns. Burning in a car crash is classified as an accident death, of which there are many forms, but the form we know you're interested in is going down in a hail of bullets, or perhaps succumbing to just one bullet. Imagine the scene. You're walking down the street with a friend and suddenly you hear gunshots. As sometimes happened, you're caught in what's called a crossfire. The next thing you know, you're down on the floor with your buddy clutching your stomach. Thing is, he's crying out in pain and you don't really feel anything. But it is you who's going to die, and he'll be the one to survive to tell the tale. As law enforcement officials have pointed out, when it comes to being shot, you can get hit in a dangerous spot and survive, and hit in a non-lethal spot and die. Also, a slight injury can cause much more pain than a severe injury. It's all about the internal damage and, of course, how fast you get help. For you, you'd feel just like this gunshot survivor said, like a very warm, like liquid is just running down my chest. He said he didn't even feel the impact, he just felt the blood. You're bleeding out, but all you really felt was a thud in your chest as if someone had punched you. It can all happen so fast that the initial hit doesn't really hurt. Although we came across one guy who said he was shot in the genitals, and the pain was apparently excruciating. First there is shock, and then the pain comes in all its glory. The guy who was hit down below was in pain for months. In your case, your friend is rolling around yelping like a dog on fire. That's because he's taken two bullets in two of the worst places when it comes to pain. One in the knee that has shattered his kneecap, aka patella, and one in the foot that smashed some of those little bones in there. If the patella was smashed, it transmits the pain to other parts of the leg, such as the femur, and that's one reason why getting shot there hurts so much. What has happened to you is the bullet has entered your chest, and because of something called the hydrostatic shockwave, much of the tissue inside your chest has been damaged, including your aorta, the largest artery in your body. The mortality rate for being shot in this place is somewhere between 92 and 100 percent. Your death is almost painless and very fast. Here's what one guy said happened to him after being shot, just before he passed out. When the bullet hit me, surprisingly, it didn't hurt at all. Not one bit, which shocked me. I remember thinking, that felt like someone just chucked a small pebble at me. But he could have easily died despite the lack of pain. When this guy finally came around, he explained stage 2 of his injury like this. The bullet entered my side just above my right hip and traversed diagonally upward and lodged itself just below my left ribcage. Instead of pain, there was a burning, aggravating sensation in my stomach area. There's no universal feeling when you get shot. Survivors talk about feeling numbness, to just having a bizarre feeling, to pins and needles, to a dull ache, to getting hit with a baseball bat or even stung by something. Some of those people said the treatment hurt more than the initial contact, possibly because of the initial kick of adrenaline. If it is indeed a fatal shot and your blood pressure drops catastrophically, you are in more shock than pain. You'll feel confused, you'll start struggling to keep conscious, and within just a couple of minutes you can be dead. It can be fast, and just be glad that you didn't get shot in the stomach. That is extremely painful as toxins are released into other organs. As the experts say, this kind of ordeal can cause multi-systemic traumatic injury, meaning the bullet inside you can cause all kinds of damage. 
Without treatment, this could lead to peritonitis and deadly sepsis. It would be an awful and exquisitely painful way to die. You can easily die from being shot in the leg if the arteries are damaged. We found a guy who shot himself just above the knee, and the coroner ruled the cause of death was from a buildup of blood around the heart, something called cardiac tamponade. This happened when his iliac arteries were damaged, arteries that provide blood to the pelvic area. We don't know what happened to him, but we do know what happened to a soldier named Nick Lavery after he'd taken a bullet to the leg in Afghanistan. The brave man subsequently put himself on the line of fire to save an infantryman, but despite the movie-like heroics, that one shot was a lot worse than a Hollywood movie might suggest. The guy described as almost indestructible was hit close range by a bullet from a PKM 7.62mm machine gun. The medic later said it couldn't have been much worse since the bullet shattered his femur, a very painful injury and severed his femoral artery. His heart then started pumping large amounts of blood to his leg, and the medic saying he would certainly have died without fast intervention. He still lost his leg above the knee. In US war zones, 90% of preventable deaths are due to uncontrolled bleeding, but if someone is there to stop the hemorrhaging, a person can usually survive. That same medic said sometimes men die from a collapsed lung when people are shot in the chest, something that's highly distressing and painful. Air builds up between the lung and the chest wall, and it keeps building. That's when you might see someone with blood coming out of their mouth. It's enough to shock anyone, especially as breathing is so hard. Then the low oxygen levels, also known as hypoxia, can lead to unconsciousness. Blood loss can lead to shock, and the person can easily die a very horrible death. We found a guy who was shot in his lung and other parts of his body during a burglary. He almost died and said it was the worst experience of his life. In his own words, he said, lying there with a hole in your lungs and liver, with your girlfriend crying over you, lying there uncertain of what just happened, not knowing what to do, not knowing if you're going to die, that part hurts. But that's just it. With so much adrenaline helping him cope, he said the mental anguish of losing his life was worse than the physical pain. Everyone is different, of course, but getting shot in the lung or bleeding out from a shot in the leg is always a terrifying ordeal. If you think dying by someone else's bullet could never happen to you, a paper published in the US National Institutes of Health said, firearm homicide is the second leading cause of injury and death among youth 10 to 24 years of age. That is, in the USA at least. If you were in, say, the UK, things might be different. Since you can't buy guns with the same ease as in many parts of the US, extreme violence is often perpetrated with a knife, but cold, hard blades can be just as deadly. According to a study undertaken by the Perelman School of Medicine, one-third of the patients they studied with bullet wounds died, while only 7.7% .7 of patients with stab wounds died. Many stabbing survivors have talked about their ordeal online, with a lot of those folks saying that they felt like they'd been punched. One of them said, I never felt the actual stabbing, but I heard a girl screaming that he'd stabbed him, and the realization of a warm, wet patch on my then slender tummy. Knives might not seem as dangerous as guns, but it's so easy to have a major artery hit and die from blood loss. If you're unlucky enough to be hit in a major organ, not much can be done to save you. Victims are often in too much of a state of shock to really understand the pain. But as they bleed out, they will start to look very pale. They might also get a headache and feel nauseous. That's what happened to MMA fighter come major league criminal Lee Murray. This is what he said happened after he got stabbed. Blood was literally flying out of my chest like a yard in front of me. This is how he described the pain. I didn't feel nothing at all. We'll come back to arguably the most painful kind of accidental death later, but let's now discuss what will likely take many of you from this earth, statistically speaking. Imagine, it's just a few years from now and you've got a ringside seat in the metaverse, watching Jake Paul come out of retirement to fight a partially blind 75-year-old former boxer with debilitating arthritis in his hands. The mismatch has made you furious, and since you're incredibly unhealthy, that fury plays havoc on your tender heart. The buildup of plaque in your arteries means you have coronary heart disease. As Paul goes down in the third and starts to cry, you stand up from your chair and scream for joy. You see stars, you become lightheaded, a sudden sharp piercing pain in your chest spreads out across your torso. You, my friend, are having a heart attack, aka myocardial infarction. People have explained the feelings as a fullness in the chest or like someone sitting on your chest. It often comes with pain that's been described as uncomfortable to intense. Britain's NHS writes that some people might not feel much at all, maybe just some dizziness or indigestion. A few people feel no pain at all, although they're often very old or diabetic. Most of the time, this doesn't lead to cardiac arrest, which is a sudden loss of heart function due to electrical disturbance. But with you, it has. Since you're at home and not in the hospital, you have less than a 10% chance of survival. You fall to the ground and die. Game over. That wasn't so painful, was it? 
There are many ways cardiac arrest might happen, not just when you have coronary heart disease. In some very rare cases, a jellyfish sting can lead to cardiac arrest, or perhaps when a person has gone too far with certain drugs. Let's stick with the drugs. In 2021, the CDC wrote, Drug overdose deaths in the US top 100,000 annually. That was more than falls and traffic accidents added together. It's sad to say that drug overdose deaths have been going up and up in the US for years now. The CDC writes that synthetic opioids, mainly fentanyl, have led to many of the deaths, as have semi-synthetic opioids and lesser so stimulants, such as methamphetamine and cocaine. With the latter, an overdose could lead to a seizure, stroke, or even a heart attack. But the one thing you've all seen on TV is paramedics slapping people around the face and perhaps giving them a shot of something after they've taken too much of a certain opiate. According to recent media articles, since the beginning of the USA's opioid crisis, there have been over 1 million opioid overdose deaths. So this is really something we can't leave out of the show. What does it feel like? In short, when a person overdoses on heroin, they might look like they're unconscious or very close to it, and in some cases their muscles might spasm. There's also a triad of things going on, which is the loss of consciousness, tiny pupils, and something called respiratory depression. Opioids affect part of the central nervous system associated with breathing. As you know, not breathing is generally not cool for humans. It can lead to something called hypoxia, which means tissues in the body are not getting enough oxygen. The method used to save them is often a shot of opioid receptor antagonist medication that reverses opioid intoxication. This is what one person said about his overdose when he mixed oxycodone with Valium. I was told I instantly slumped over in the car seat with my head very nearly between my legs. Someone asked if I was okay. Apparently, I responded I was fine. Instinct must have taken over. I was asked again, no response. The third time I answered the same, that I was fine. Then I stopped breathing. Another person wrote about her overdose, saying, I got off my bed and started to walk around. Within five seconds, I knew I was in serious trouble. I fell to the ground, my vision started to collapse, I could see, then I couldn't, and this happened in waves. My chest felt very tight, so tight that I couldn't breathe. I was making all sorts of noises trying to breathe. So perhaps not painful, but scary for some. But it's not only drug abusers who die from opioid overdoses. Sometimes people taking the drugs for certain kinds of pain can one day slip over the edge. One of the pains associated with pain relief drugs is cancer, something that happens when your body produces too much abnormal cells and your immune system can't stop reproduction. When the cancer overwhelms vital organs, it can spell the end of your life. You need to know how it might feel dying from it since statistically there's a high chance you'll go this way. Cancer is a tricky one because there are over 100 kinds of it that can affect all parts of the body, and the conditions can give people varying amounts of pain. That's why some cancers are called silent killers because people might not know they have it until it's too late. Studies tell us that 90% of cancer sufferers will experience pain at some point through the crisis, but that pain could be anywhere on the pain scale. For instance, a study undertaken in the Netherlands reported that only one in four cancer sufferers described their pain as intolerable. According to the CDC, in 2019, the most common cancer that killed people in the USA was lung cancer, which was associated with 23% of all cancer deaths. Other common killers were cancers of the colon, the pancreas, the female breast, and the prostate. The problem with lung cancer is that it can indeed be a bit of a silent killer, with many people finding out they have it when it's already progressed. Sometimes the person might have a constant cough or lung infections that come back, sometimes chest pains when the tumor presses on the nerves. They might also feel nothing and be dead in two weeks. A woman who was diagnosed with breast cancer said this about her pain. Initially, I did not have any pain but noticed the lump first. It was 6 centimeters in diameter, so it was big enough to see when I looked in the mirror. But within a week, I was in a lot of pain. It's hard to say how much pain the person will be in, and it's just as hard to say when they'll die. But as time passes, if the cancer cells cannot be beaten, the person can be bedbound, and in the later stage, they might not even be able to talk. If any of you have been at someone's bedside during the final stages, you might have seen that the person wasn't screaming out in pain. In many cases, they just seemed to drift out of life, although pain medications could have been administered at that time. This is usually happening as the person could be at the stage that's called preactive death. This is usually just a week or a few weeks before they die. After that comes active death, which happens in the days and hours before death. In active death, the blood pressure will drop, breathing could become shallow, and the person might not be able to be awoken. At some point, the person will make a sound known as the death rattle, which means it lights out. If you've seen someone in active death, you'll know it's not easy to understand their pain levels since they're only half there. With that in mind, dying can be a very complex process, but it can also just be plain bloody horrible as you'll now see.
In 2014, the Washington Post wrote that because of terrorism in part of the Middle East and a subsequent refugee crisis, thousands of people were at risk of dying from an excruciating death. That death was not having food or water. You've all been thirsty before, some of you so thirsty that the water might have seemed like the most wonderful thing the world has on offer. There's good reason for this. It is. As you may know, our bodies are made up of around 60 to 70 percent water, some of which is lost each day from urinating, sweating, and breathing. When you're severely dehydrated, the water in your cells is transferred into the bloodstream, and this makes those cells shrink. When the cells in your brain shrink, that beautiful and complex organ doesn't work very well. This is why people who've gone without water have gone somewhat delirious. Another organ, the kidneys, will start to shut down because of this lack of water. That means they won't do their job of getting rid of all the waste products in the blood. Soon, all the organs in your body will start to shut down. So, with toxic blood and a failing brain, the dehydrated person will eventually fall into a coma. This is why a long time before you get close to that stage, you'll start thinking water is the greatest thing on the planet and you'll almost do anything to get some. Just as the explorer Chaz Powell said, a man who almost died from dehydration. He told the BBC in 2020 that when he was in this state in Africa, he went from being concerned to going half mad. By this point, I was starting to feel really ill, he said. I started to overheat, and my body temperature was just insane. When things get really bad, he started to drink his own urine. But that urine, which is usually 95% water and 5% waste, had more waste in it because he was already dehydrated. It wasn't very good for him at all, but he didn't have any other options. Not long after, an SOS call he had made was answered. He was told a helicopter would get to him in four hours, to which he thought, I don't have four hours. He moved on down a cliff at one point, fainting. He was at risk from kidney failure, delirium, and even having a heart attack because dehydration at its worst can also seriously affect the cardiovascular system. All organs eventually fail if dehydration is not treated. He survived, but had he died, it would have been a really horrible way to go. Needless to say, going without water or food is one of the worst ways to die, both of which at the end lead to multiple organ failure. We can't imagine that something like starving to death could be anything but horrific. This is why during great famines, some people have turned to cannibalism out of sheer desperation. With starvation, your body literally starts eating itself. Once the fat's gone, it starts taking the muscles, and after that, the vital organs are affected in a bad way. It's hard to say just how long it takes because everyone is different, but an article in the British Medical Journal mentioned a bunch of hunger strikers who were stopped somewhere between 21 and 40 days because the people who were starving were on death's door. The cause of death is often disease, since without food the body's immune system can't function properly. This is a very slow death, and while the pain might not be acute, the long process must be extremely difficult. Just to give you a real-world example, one person said this about his lucky escape from starvation. Very painful, very terrible way to go. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. The World Health Organization said throughout the world heart disease is the biggest killer, but in second place it had stroke, so we think we should have a look at that. Stroke kills close to 6 million people in the world every year. It happens when your brain does not get the blood supply it requires, often because of a clot in an artery. And with a lack of oxygen to that brilliant organ, things can go terribly wrong very fast. According to world-stroke.org, around 13 million people every year will have a stroke, but there are a lot of survivors. Unfortunately, many people that will have a stroke are left with profound disabilities, often with affected speech or even paralysis. When the stroke is termed catastrophic, well, the person might lapse into a coma that they never come out of. But what we want to know is, does it hurt dying this way? People who've arrived at the hospital after a stroke are very confused, although they don't usually scream out in pain. They might have slurred speech, the loss of some bodily functions, or they might have a facial droop, but they don't seem to be hurting all that much. Here's an example. A guy named Doug Tapking said he was waiting for his steak in a restaurant in California when things started to get weird. His friends told him he was mumbling. In his own words, he said, My right arm came up without any trouble, but my left arm was limp at my side. So I reached out and grabbed my left arm at my wrist, you know? I kind of pulled it up to my chest level, and I let it go, and it just immediately fell into my lap. At that point, I vividly remember saying to myself, oh crap, I'm having a stroke. But for others, it can indeed be very painful. A woman named Mari Mendenhall said the pain was so intense, it felt like an explosion in her brain. She, like many stroke victims, had some fairly serious disabilities to deal with after. In conclusion, you could die from a stroke and not feel that much pain. Your sweet life could be over before you had much time to think about pain. Now for two more things that come very high on the list of how you might die. They are chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, and liver disease. 
These do get a special mention because the death is usually very gradual. They might also be the result of some not-so-great life choices, such as smoking for many years or habitual boozing for breakfast. With both these diseases, the problem is when they're at the most severe stage, they often affect your well-being to the extreme. With COPD, your lung capacity might be so low that it's very hard to breathe. This can also be very painful because it makes the lungs blow up and creates a lot of pressure on the chest wall, as well as the spine and the diaphragm. The son of a man that died from COPD said at one point in time all his energy was spent just trying to breathe. So yes, dying slowly from this might cause significant pain, but close to the end, the person would usually be in hospice and loaded with drugs. As for liver disease, people get non-alcoholic liver disease and alcoholic liver disease. We tend to think of the hardening of the liver, or cirrhosis, happening mostly to people who drink a lot. But the majority of people get it from inherited conditions, obesity, and infection. This is one of the world's biggest killers. It's another one of those silent killers, too, because often people don't feel pain until they have a severe form of cirrhosis. We looked at the British Liver Trust Forum in the UK, and people there said things like, don't read the internet, because you'll end up thinking you'll be dead in a minute. Many of those people said sometimes they had pain where the liver is, but many said they didn't suffer from much pain. But in the end stage, 82% of people will feel pain, usually the chronic kind. Sometimes the liver damage causes fluid retention and that can enlarge the spleen, causing pain in the abdomen. The problem worsens when the toxins from the liver can travel to the brain and cause something called hepatic encephalopathy, which can make people fall, be confused, or even have seizures. That's why the last stage before death can be very unpleasant. Now for some very painful ways to die. More accidents. As you already know, many people around the world die from drug overdoses, although the highest on the list of accidental deaths around the world is traffic accidents, much more so in less developed nations. In the US in 2020, Reuters reported that 38,680 people died in road accidents out of 3,358,814 total deaths. That was with the extra COVID deaths. These are big numbers, and that's why the WHO says there are around 1.3 million deaths from traffic accidents globally. You already know about burning to death, which is one of the leading causes of accidental death in the world, and that can happen in a car crash. But the main reason you might die in a traffic collision is the fact that you suffer severe trauma to a part of your body, especially the head. With a severe traumatic brain injury, you could be dead and not feel a thing. Although, if you die from internal bleeding, there can be severe pain and then shock. This severe trauma can affect any part of the body. And if you've ever seen someone in the hospital after they've been smashed up and broken many bones, well, often they're screaming out for mercy. Sometimes that person could have a complete amputation of a body part, which happens more often with motorcycle accidents. If they're not unconscious, they'll likely be very confused and dizzy. The next stage could be shock, and if that happens, even if the person gets to the emergency room, there's only around a 20-50% to 50 chance of survival. This is how one survivor described his motorcycle accident. He said, I remember tumbling violently, then sliding into the curb's ankle first, then continuing to slide. I tried to get up, but still sliding and ate it again, then continued to slide on my back. He looked down where he stopped and he saw a lot of blood, including what he described as the inside of his ankle. Weird thing is, his other leg hurt much more, even though that was intact. He added, I was conscious during the whole thing, from start till surgery. I had to sit in pain for 10 minutes in an ambulance, 15 minutes for them to get me into the ambulance, and 20 minutes for the hospital. Somebody collected the bit of his leg that was missing and put it in a bag. So little was left that the rest had to be amputated. Amputation can also be a consequence of a car crash when someone's legs are crushed, a feeling described as intensely painful. The femur, sometimes said to be the most painful bone to break, can also be shattered. When you break the strongest bone in your body, you may also cause nerve, tendon, muscle, and ligament damage, and with a bone being so big, you feel a lot more pain. Crushing injuries cause the most extreme pain imaginable, which is why victims are often given ketamine and morphine. And in some cases, this is not enough and these poor victims end up screaming in pain until their untimely death. Such injuries are common in earthquakes, with one in New Zealand mentioned in a research paper as causing severe neuropathic pain after the initial injuries. That's pain related to your nervous system not working right. Still, a young man who survived an earthquake in the US and was lucky to survive said, I thought I was paralyzed, I couldn't feel my legs, I couldn't feel my back. Spinal fractures are very complicated but often come with lots of pain. So, with a traffic accident and accidents that might cause similar injuries, there could be incredibly severe pain right before death. But it might also be over before you know what's happened. The next way to die we think is about as bad as it gets, for a very short time at least. When it comes to accidental deaths around the world, drowning kills a lot of people. 
The WHO reported in 2019 that 236,000 people drowned to death in the entire world. In comparison, the WHO said that same year, there were 684,000 fatal falls globally and close to half a million deaths due to illicit drug use. Smoking kills around 8 million and booze around 3 million, while homicide deaths numbered around 460,000. But let's stick with drowning. There are countless people who've almost died from drowning, and every one we looked at had a different take on the pain. There's a misconception that drowning is a peaceful experience, it's harrowing, and when your lungs fill with water, there is certainly pain. When you first swallow the water, you go into what's called fight-or-flight mode. But what happens then is the airways close themselves, so more water can't get in. After that, it should take around two minutes for the person to pass out. At this point, they can still be resuscitated. Obviously, the person doesn't know what's going on at that stage. Their heart will begin to slow, and they might go into something called hypoxic convulsion, which is a kind of seizure that occurs when the brain is robbed of adequate oxygen flow. Then, when the brain, heart, and lungs are beyond repair, there's death. This should take between 4 and 6 minutes. One person described it like this. Long before that struggle is over, your throat is on fire, agonizingly on fire. Your throat closes up and you start to feel that your lungs couldn't possibly hurt more. This is a kind of torture, although we found quite a few cases of survivors saying when they let go, a kind of peaceful state did occur. One such person said, After some time, things start to get black, and you start to feel a sort of peace. Ironically, you stop trying to float and you just let yourself go. We also found a fair bit of data about people seeming to find some kind of peace just before death. According to Scientific American, it's not unusual for people to have a near-death experience and live to tell people they went to a kind of paradise where everything was just perfect. Some see angels, some meet loved ones, some go to distant lands and trip like they've had a big hit of DMT. In fact, a paper published in Frontiers of Psychology said that a near-death experience for some is like a blissful psychedelic experience. Scientists don't really know why, with the paper saying this warrants further investigation. These strange experiences also feel very real. In a paper published in the U.S. National Institutes of Health, just over 1,000 people who had near-death experiences were asked how real their experience felt. 95.6% of people ticked the experience was definitely real box, 4% said probably real, 0.3% said probably not real, and 0.1% said definitely not real. We're all going to die someday, which is scary, but it's also something we might think about now and again so we embrace life right now. There's also a big payoff to death, which is the absence of pain. Let's hope when we go, it's not just blackness we experience at the edge of life, but what this person experienced. I found myself in a meadow, mind cleared, identity intact. The meadow was lit with this glorious radiant light, like no light I've ever seen, and a gentle inner glow shone from each and every plant. Now you need to watch what happens to your body after you die, or have a look at this.